Welcome to this video on chronic rhinosinusitis. sinusitis. Before we begin, consider the following questions. What is chronic rhinosinusitis and what are the cardinal symptoms of this? What are the mechanisms that drive type 1 versus type 2 disease and how does this manifest in terms of symptoms? What is the mechanism through which various treatments for CRS work? And why does aspirin exacerbate symptoms in patients with NERD? Chronic rhinosinusitis is a descriptive term used to encompass a range of conditions characterized by chronic inflammation of the nasal and sinus mucosa, which lasts for more than 12 weeks. The condition is defined by at least two of the following cardinal symptoms. Blocked nose, rhinorrhea or postnasal drip, facial pain or pressure, and a reduced or absent sense of smell. These symptoms result from a breakdown in the barrier function of the nasal mucosa, allowing the invasion of pathogens, allergens or irritants, which triggers an inflammatory response. The precise mechanisms underlying this breakdown are not fully understood. Chronic rhinosinusitis can be classified as primary or secondary. In primary CRS, there is no clear underlying pathology identified, while in secondary CRS, the symptoms are a sequela of another condition, which may be localized, such as a dental infection or tumor, or systemic, such as cystic fibrosis, or granulomatosis with polyangitis. Primary CRS can also be classified as localized involving a single sinus or diffuse affecting multiple sinuses and can be subclassified into different endotypes such as type 1, type 2 or mixed endotypes based upon the predominant immune response observed in inflamed tissues. The nasal mucosa acts as a protective barrier, much like the skin, preventing the entry of pathogens, allergens and irritants. In CRS, this barrier is compromised, leading to excessive immune activation. With type 1 TRS, this is principally driven by Th1 cells, which recruit neutrophils and are triggered primarily by bacterial infections. The Th1 cells secrete interferon gamma and interleukin-8, recruiting neutrophils to fight the infection. The neutrophils contribute to pus formation and recruit additional cells involved in cell-mediated immunity. This results in mucopurulent discharge and facial pain or pressure typical of type 1 CRS along with nasal blockage. By contrast, type 2 CRS is driven by Th2 cells which recruit eosinophils. The Th2 cells secrete interleukin 4, 5 and 13 along with promoting IgE production. The eosinophils produce leukotrienes which recruit more eosinophils while also increasing vascular permeability, leading to mucosal edema and polyp formation. As such, the typical features of type 2 CRS are nasal polyps, hyposmia and nasal blockage. A variety of treatment options are available for CRS and can be tailored to the specific endotype. Nasal saline irrigation is helpful as this washes away irritants, allergens and pathogens from the mucosal surface, reducing inflammation. Intranasal corticosteroids act upon multiple parts of this cascade. They reduce inflammation-related damage at the mucosal barrier to improve epithelial integrity and also suppress cytokine production and reduce leukotriene production. Surgery is helpful to open the sinuses and enable delivery of steroids to the inflamed tissue, enabling the epithelial barrier to be treated. It is also effective at reducing the inflammatory burden by allowing debridement of the tissues where inflammatory cytokines are being produced and thus driving sinusitis. Leukotriene inhibitors such as Montelukast block leukotriene receptors, reducing eosinophil recruitment, vascular permeability and mucus hypersecretion. Clorithromycin can modulate immune response, particularly in type 1 CRS, by reducing interleukin-8 activity and neutrophil recruitment. Finally, biological agents are able to target specific cytokines to block type 2 inflammation, with dupilumab blocking IL-4 and IL-13 signaling, omalizumab inhibiting IgE-mediated effects, and mepolizumab blocking IL-5 to reduce eosinophil recruitment. NSAID exacerbated respiratory disease, NERD, also called aspirin exacerbated respiratory disease, describes patients in whom CRS or asthma is worsened with NSAID use. And this is due to an inherent abnormality in eicosanoid metabolism. Arachidonic acid is a precursor molecule, 
and is metabolized by one of two primary pathways, the COX or the LOX pathway. The COX pathway produces prostaglandins, which are anti-inflammatory, while the LOX pathway produces leukotrienes, which are pro-inflammatory. In NERD, patients have a propensity for LOX pathway overactivation, and when NSAIDs inhibit the COX pathway, arachidonic acid metabolism shifts exclusively towards the LOX pathway, resulting in excessive leukotriene production. This leads to worsening of CRS symptoms and can also exacerbate their asthma. I hope you found this video to be useful. Please consider subscribing and let us know what you'd like.